Hey guys and welcome back to Bolt Life. Today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about my pregnancy. It is a Paragard IUD pregnancy and I just wanted to tell you guys a little bit about it, how we found out, and some of the processes that we've been going through since we found out. Um, on June 27th, which was my son Dylan's 10th birthday, I woke up uh, having stomach pains and I called my husband home from work to take me to the ER. And so when we got there, they ran a bunch of tests and they told me that I had a bladder infection and that they would go and get my prescription and that they would be back to release me and let me go home. And when the doctor came back in, he said that I wasn't quite done yet because my pregnancy test came back positive. I was in complete shock because I have the Paragard IUD, it's a 10 year IUD, and I had had it in for three years. So I didn't really even think that pregnancy was possible. Um, turns out that there's a 0.8% chance of getting pregnant with uh, the Paragard. And I'm not 0.8%, I guess. So I immediately started crying. Um, panicking because I have had several miscarriages in the past. I have a condition called MTHFR, which is a blood clotting disorder, and I have to take Levinox injections daily during my pregnancies to prevent miscarriages. And I was worried that with this pregnancy not being planned and me not being on the medication, I wasn't sure how far along I was. I was just worried that it would be too late and the baby wouldn't be okay. So they decided to send me straight back for an ultrasound to confirm the pregnancy. And they wheeled me back and they did the ultrasound and they couldn't find anything. They were unable to find any signs of a pregnancy, but they were able to confirm that my IUD was still in place. Unfortunately, the doctor told me that he believed that the pregnancy was ectopic and if it was, I would have to have emergency surgery. So they sent me home from the hospital and told me to follow up with my regular OBGYN the next day. And so I did. I went to see my doctor and they decided to do a repeat ultrasound. And she too could not see any signs of the pregnancy. Um, my blood work said that I was only maybe three weeks at the time and that's very early to see any kind of fluid sac or yolk sac or any kind of heartbeat. So she decided to send me straight over from her office to a specialist downtown. So I went downtown and saw a specialist and they did another ultrasound. And he said that he did not believe that it was in my tubes because my tubes did not look swollen which was a relief for me because that meant no emergency surgery. But um, he said even if the pregnancy was in my uterus, the chance of survival would only be 25 to 50%. He called in another tech to take a look and they were finally able to find a tiny little gray speck in the very tip of my uterus. And the doctor said that that was where the egg had implanted. There was no yolk sac or heartbeat or anything like that. It was just a tiny, tiny gray speck. And he did confirm that my IUD had slipped very low and the pregnancy was above the IUD. So he said he would refer me back to my doctor again and um, have the IUD removed if I didn't miscarry between then and when I saw the doctor. So I went back to see the doctor wasn't even probably four days later and she did another ultrasound and was not able to really see much she was able to see what they called a fluid sac but there was no yolk sac or heartbeat at that time either but she did go ahead and pull the IUD and they put me back on my Levinox injections and sent me home to hope for the best so I went home and they scheduled another doctor's appointment for me to go back a week later to have another ultrasound and have more of my levels checked. And at that point, my oldest son, Landon, was starting to get concerned because I had been going to doctor's appointments a lot and I had spent 
his brother's birthday at the emergency room and he knew that that wasn't common to me and he was worried that something was wrong that maybe I might have cancer or I don't know he's 13 he was 12 at the time and his mind just was starting to wander so I finally pulled him aside and explained to him that I was pregnant with the IUD and I had had it removed and I was back on the injections and that my chance of miscarriage with a normal pregnancy was already higher than average but with all the complications that I was experiencing with this pregnancy they didn't have super high hopes that it would be able to carry to full term and I explained to him that we were going to do everything we could and we would pray for the baby but I wasn't ready to let all of his siblings and the rest of the family know yet because it's a lot for anyone to have to go through and the kids are all so young. They know about my past miscarriages. They talk about, you know, their baby brothers and sisters in heaven and it just wasn't something I really wanted them to experience at just five, seven, and ten. So on July 19th, I went back again and they did another ultrasound and they were able to see um, the baby and the baby did have a heartbeat. Um, they said that I was six weeks and four days or five days, I think. And they wanted to monitor me closely. So they continue to bring me back every week for ultrasounds. I think I ended up having nine ultrasounds in eight weeks total until they were confident in the heartbeat of the baby, the heart rate, and the size, and everything seemed to be growing and developing properly. So by that point, they had determined I was 10 weeks and the heartbeat was good, the baby was growing properly. They had kind of taken me out of that worry zone. They said that it should be a normal pregnancy. My chance of miscarriage at that point wasn't gonna be any higher than anyone else. So finally at I don't know, I think around 10 weeks, we decided to do an announcement to the kids. So I felt confident in telling the kids that we were pregnant and we wrapped up some gifts and gave it to the children to open and for them to guess what the gifts meant. It took them a little while. The girls were really confused because we had talked about it before and they had known that we weren't planning on growing our family. They knew that we were happy with, you know, the boys and the girls that we had. and. So they were shocked. They thought it was a joke at first, and then when they realized that it was serious, they got really excited. I think in the back of my head, I was still worried about, you know, miscarriage. And I think even now, you know, I'm 16 weeks today, and I'm still, I don't know. I think once you've experienced losses like I have in the past, like I don't think you're ever 100% confident until the baby is here. But at 14 weeks, I went back for another ultrasound, and during that ultrasound, they could tell the sex of the baby. So we had them put the gender in an envelope, and I dropped it off to my sister at work, and she planned a gender reveal for the kids. It was a fun day. Um, we popped a balloon, and they did some confetti, and it was blue. And everybody was excited except for Ainsley. She's only five and she really, really wanted a little sister. And she cried. She cried for, I don't know, probably an hour we were having to console her. But, you know, I just explained to her that she's the baby girl. She'll always get to be the baby girl. And now we'll have a baby boy. And I think as time has gone on, she's okay with it now. So today I am 16 weeks. You can see a little bit of my belly. It's starting to grow. I am in the safety zone. Um, the baby is due March 2nd, but because of the medications and stuff that I take, they induce me a week early. So my inducement date is February 22nd. So hopefully we will be getting to see little baby boy. We don't have a name yet. Names are hard for me. Yeah, I'm not very good at names. But hopefully, you know, we'll get to see baby boy on February 22nd. And we plan on, you know, following this pregnancy through our vlogs and, you know, following the birth of baby. And we're excited to be able to introduce him to you guys. I really hope that this video helps some of you if you are experiencing an unexpected pregnancy or a high-risk pregnancy or if you have gotten pregnant on an IUD, which is rare, but apparently it happens. I hope that this is encouraging for you. You know, I was told that it was going 
to be ectopic and I was going to have to have surgery and then I was told that even if the baby was in the uterus I was gonna lose it and then as the weeks progressed you know now we're excited to be welcoming a little baby boy and I get emotional thinking about it because I thought I was done after Ainsley and I was terrified when I found out about this pregnancy and I've just prayed so hard for the baby. It's amazing how I didn't know how much I wanted another baby. It's amazing to me how, you know, sometimes the world just gives you gifts that you didn't even know you wanted. To see the excitement, you know, with the girls picking out baby clothes and picking out the baby bedding and they hug my belly and they kiss my belly and Ainsley brings me extra snacks and says she wants her baby brother to have it and it's just really sweet. It's really sweet moments that I'm cherishing. So if you guys have any questions, um, leave them in the comments down below and I would be glad to answer them for you. I hope that you guys will continue to follow us on this pregnancy journey. If you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon, you will get notifications when we upload new videos.